Today marks 100 years since the legendary discovery of King Tut's tomb. Our Kelly Kobiea has more on what's still being discovered in the desert sand a century later. Nearly 5,000 items were found in King Tut's tomb, from the really big to the really tiny, and nearly all of them were in perfect condition. Prepare to be shocked as startling news has recently been uncovered in Egypt, leaving both scientists and archaeologists in sheer amazement. In this video, we'll find out how, in a truly unexpected turn of events, Archaeologists stumbled upon an incredibly rare and well-preserved Egyptian mummy coffin dating back an astonishing 4,500 years. The mystery surrounding this sealed, amazing piece of history poses intriguing questions about what it contains. What secrets are hidden beneath this discovery that has been untouched for thousands of years? How will it reshape the world's understanding of the past and ancient Egypt? Let's get into it. Archaeologists recently opened an Egyptian mummy coffin, which was found in Saqqara, the burial ground and necropolis for the ancient city of Memphis throughout history. The shocking reveal of this remarkably well-preserved coffin adds an intriguing layer to our understanding of Egypt's rich history. Before we dive deeper into this latest discovery, let's rewind for a moment and discuss the history of mummification. Until recently, it was thought that the earliest ancient Egyptian mummies formed naturally due to their burial environment. However, a 2014 11-year study by the University of York, Macquarie University, and the University of Oxford proposed that artificial mummification occurred 1,500 years earlier. This was corroborated in 2018 through tests on a 5,600-year-old mummy in Turin, confirming deliberate mummification with linen wrappings and embalming oils derived from conifer resin and aromatic plant extracts. The ancient Egyptians believed preserving the deceased was crucial for their religious practices. Mummification, originating as early as the Second Dynasty, around 2800 BC, became an essential part of death rituals. Egyptians viewed body preservation as a vital element for a prosperous afterlife. With the growing affluence in Egypt, burial practices became a status symbol for the wealthy, leading to the construction of elaborate tombs and the development of more advanced embalming techniques. By the 4th dynasty, around 2600 BC, Egyptian embalmers started achieving true mummification through evisceration. Although many details about the early stages of mummification remain unknown, the mummification process is directly detailed in only a few documents dating back to the Greco-Roman period. Surviving papyri mainly focus on ceremonial embalming rituals rather than specific surgical procedures. One such text, the Ritual of Embalming, provides insights into practical aspects, but only two incomplete copies are known. Visual representations of mummification are also scarce, with the tomb TT23 of J being one of the only two known to depict a mummy's wrapping. Herodotus' histories, particularly in Book 2, offers one of the most comprehensive accounts of the Egyptian mummification process, mentioning the use of natron for dehydrating corpses. However, these descriptions are brief and somewhat ambiguous leaving scholars to deduce many techniques by studying unearthed mummies. Utilizing recent technological advancements, scientists have gained extensive insights into mummification techniques. In 2008, CT scans of a 2,400-year-old mummy revealed an organic rod inside the skull, dispelling Herodotus's claim of an iron hook for brain removal. Earlier experiments in 1994 by researchers Bob Breyer and Ronald Wade supported this, showing that liquefying the brain for drainage was more effective than using a hook. Through decades of study, modern Egyptologists now understand the ancient Egyptian mummification process. The initial step involved preventing decomposition by removing internal organs and cleansing the body with a mixture of spices and palm wine, leaving only the heart. Following this, the body was dried with natron inside and outside, and the organs were either sealed in jars or wrapped for placement back in the body. 
This entire process typically spanned 40 days. After dehydration, the mummy underwent extensive wrapping with layers of linen cloth. Egyptian priests strategically placed small amulets within these layers to protect the deceased from evil forces. Once fully wrapped, the mummy received a coating of resin to prevent the intrusion of moist air. This resin was also applied to seal the coffin. The finalized mummy, accompanied by worldly possessions believed to assist in the afterlife, was then enclosed within its tomb. In ancient Egyptian tombs, Aspergillus niger, a robust fungus capable of thriving in diverse environments, has been discovered in mummies. Disturbing these mummies can release airborne spores of this fungus, posing a potential health risk. Mummification is a critical tradition in ancient Egyptian culture for contemporary observers. Preserving the human body is considered a fundamental aspect of Egyptian life. However, the history of mummification reveals its evolution and varying accessibility across different social ranks during different epochs. According to Herodotus, there were at least three distinct mummification processes, ranging from the most sophisticated to the method utilized by the less affluent classes. The costliest mummification method involved preserving the body through dehydration and protection against pests, mainly insects, aligning with the functions Herodotus outlined. Initially, the brain extraction process differed from Herodotus's iron hook description. Instead, a rod was used to liquefy the brain through the skull, allowing gravity to facilitate drainage through the nose. The skull was then cleansed with drugs, eliminating any residual brain tissue and acting as a bacterial deterrent. Using a sharp blade made from an Ethiopian stone, embalmers made a flank incision, removing abdominal contents. Herodotus omitted details about separately preserving these organs, either in specialized jars or back in the cavity, a practice evident in the most expensive embalming, as confirmed by archaeological findings. The abdominal cavity was washed with palm wine and an infusion of aromatic herbs and spices. It was then filled with spices, including myrrh, cassia, and every spice except frankincense, as noted by Herodotus, contributing to the overall preservation of the individual. To further dehydrate the body, it was immersed in natron, a naturally occurring salt, for 70 days. Herodotus emphasizes that the body should not remain in the nation for more or less than 70 days. A shorter duration would result in incomplete dehydration, while a more extended period would render the body too rigid for the subsequent wrapping process. Following this, the embalmers washed the body anew and enveloped it in linen bandages. These bandages were coated with gum and identified through modern research as a waterproofing and antimicrobial agent. After this stage, the perfected mummy was returned to the family and placed in human-shaped wooden cases. Affluent individuals positioned these wooden cases inside stone sarcophagi for added protection. According to Herodotus, the family stood the sarcophagus upright against the tomb wall. But that's not all. The second technique detailed by Herodotus was employed by the middle class or those aiming to minimize costs. In this approach, cedar tree-derived oil was syringe-injected into the abdomen with a rectal plug preventing oil leakage. This oil likely served the dual purpose of liquefying internal organs and disinfecting the abdominal cavity, thus negating the need for canopic jars and separate preservation expenses. Afterward, the Bodhi underwent a 70-day immersion in natron. At the end of this period, the dehydrated body was retrieved, and the cedar oil, now containing liquefied organs, was drained through the rectum. Following dehydration, the body could be returned to the family. Herodotus doesn't elaborate on the burial process, but these mummies were possibly placed in shaft tombs. Less affluent individuals utilized terracotta coffins. The third and least expensive method involved clearing the intestines with an unnamed liquid administered as an enema. After a 70-day natron treatment, the body was returned to the family with no further details provided by Herodotus. Now, 
Has there been a history of archaeologists discovering Egyptian mummy coffins? If so, what did they find? In 2011, during routine excavations at the Dog Catacomb in Saqqara Necropolis, Salima Ikram's team and an international group led by Paul Nicholson from Cardiff University discovered nearly 8 million animal mummies near the sacred temple of Anubis. The mummified animals, predominantly dogs, are believed to have served as conveyors of their owners' prayers to the deities. Subsequently, in July 2018, a German-Egyptian research team led by Ramadan Badri Hussein from the University of Tübingen reported an exceptional find, an intricately gilded burial mask likely dating back to the Saite Persian period. This mask, adorned with obsidian, calcite, and possibly onyx covering the eyes, is an exceedingly rare discovery, with the last similar mask found in 1939. Hussein remarked on the significance of the find, noting the scarcity of precious metal masks due to the widespread looting of ancient Egyptian dignitaries' tombs in ancient times. In September 2018, a team of Polish archaeologists led by Kamil Kuraszkiewicz from the Faculty of Oriental Studies at the University of Warsaw unearthed numerous mummies dating back 2,000 years. The Polish-Egyptian Expedition, operating under the Polish Center of Mediterranean Archaeology University of Warsaw, had been conducting investigations near the Djoser Pyramid for over two decades. Significant findings included the tomb of Vizier Merefnebef, discovered in 1997, featuring a funerary chapel adorned with multicolored reliefs and the tomb of courtier Nyanknefertem, uncovered in 2003. The expedition also explored two necropoles, revealing several dozen graves of noblemen from the 6th dynasty around 24th-21st century BC and 500 graves of indigent individuals dating approximately from the 6th century BC to the 1st century AD. Most bodies were poorly preserved, and all organic materials, including wooden caskets, had decayed. The tombs discovered in 2018 are part of the younger Upper Necropolis. The polish egyptian expedition's research extends to interpreting the Dry Mot, a vast trench encircling the Djoser Pyramid. Recent discoveries support the hypothesis that the Dry Mot symbolically represented the pharaoh's journey to the netherworld, a path the deceased ruler traversed for eternal life. In November 2018, an Egyptian archaeological mission discovered seven ancient Egyptian tombs at the Saqqara Necropolis. Three of these tombs, dating back to the 5th and 6th dynasties, were dedicated to cats, with one of the four remaining sarcophagi left unsealed. Among the cat mummies were 100 wooden and gilded statues of cats, one in bronze dedicated to the cat goddess Bastet, and funerary items from the 12th dynasty. Another tomb in the collection belonged to Khufu Imhat, the overseer of buildings in the royal palace. During the same month, a set of rare mummified scarab beetles was found in two sarcophagi, one adorned with paintings featuring giant black beetles. In November 2018, the Egyptian government disclosed the discovery of a previously unknown tomb at Saqqara dating back 4,400 years. This tomb, belonging to the high-ranking priest Wati, who served under King Neferir Kare Kakai in the 5th dynasty, includes burials for Wati, his wife, four children, and his mother. Measuring approximately 33 feet in length and 10 feet in width, the tomb features five burial shafts and a basement, housing over 50 sculptures and adorned with painted scenes depicting family life, wine, and pottery making, musical performances, sailing, hunting, and furniture crafting. On April 13, 2019, an expedition led by a member of the Czech Institute of Egyptology, Mohamed Megahed, uncovered a 4,000-year-old tomb near Egypt's Saqqara Necropolis. Archaeologists confirmed the tomb belonged to an influential figure named Kuwi from the 5th dynasty. Described as L-shaped, the tomb includes a small corridor leading to an antechamber and a larger chamber with painted reliefs portraying the tomb owner at an offerings table. 
Some paintings retained their vibrancy over time in the tomb, primarily constructed from white limestone bricks and featuring a tunnel entrance typical of pyramids. Archaeologists suggest a potential connection between Kuwi and the pharaoh, since the mausoleum was found near the pyramid of the Egyptian pharaoh Jedkare Isesi, who ruled during that era. In October 2019, a collection of 30 coffins containing mummies was unearthed, marking Egypt's most significant discovery in over a century. This cache, a unique find, was the first to be uncovered by an exclusively Egyptian mission. The coffins were neatly arranged in two rows, stacked atop each other, and positioned about three feet below the sandy surface. The initial discovery occurred when the head of the first coffin partially emerged from the sand. Notably, two coffins housed the remains of children, a rare occurrence in archaeology. Mostafa Waziri, the Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Antiquities, explained that the mummy's gender could be discerned by examining the shape of the hands on the coffin, open hands indicating a female. In contrast, hands clenched into fists, suggesting a male. The colors of the coffin inscriptions, crafted from limestone, red oak, turquoise, and other natural stones mixed with egg whites, remained remarkably intact. The coating of egg yolk and candle wax applied to make the coffins shine was still visible, adding to the uniqueness of this discovery. But what about the 2020s? What recent discoveries have archaeologists made in this decade, and what shocking truth have they revealed? Let's find out. Have archaeologists found any coffins in the 2020s? What could they have possibly discovered when they opened the coffins? On April 28, 2020, archaeologists announced the discovery of a 30-foot-deep burial shaft containing five limestone sarcophagi, four wooden coffins with human mummies, and various artifacts, including 365 Fayence Ushabti and a small wooden obelisk painted with depictions of Horus, Isis, and Nephthys. In September 2020, a 36-foot-deep burial shaft revealed nearly 30 sealed sarcophagi. On October 3, 2020, Egypt's tourism and antiquities minister, Khalid el-Anani, announced the discovery of at least 59 sealed sarcophagi with mummies more than 2,600 years old. Additionally, archaeologists revealed 20 statues of Ta Soker and a carved 35-centimeter-tall bronze statue of the god Nefertem. On October 19, 2020, the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities announced the discovery of gilded wooden statues and over 80 coffins in three burial shafts, believed to contain senior officials and priests from the 26th dynasty. In November 2020, archaeologists unearthed over 100 delicately painted wooden coffins from the 26th dynasty, along with 40 statues of the local goddess Ptah Soker, funeral masks, canopic jars, and 1,000 ceramic amulets, confirming Saqqara as the leading burial site of the 26th dynasty. In January 2021, the Tourism and Antiquities Ministry discovered more than 50 wooden sarcophagi in 52 burial shafts dating back to the New Kingdom period. The shafts were around 30 to 40 feet deep, and a 13-eft long papyrus containing texts from Chapter 17 of the Book of the Dead was found. The papyrus belonged to a man named Buka Af, whose name was also on his coffin, and four Ushabtis. The shafts also yielded wooden funerary masks, board games, a shrine dedicated to the god Anubis, bird-shaped artifacts, and a bronze axe. A limestone stela from the reign of Rameses II was found, depicting the overseer of the king's military chariot, Kapta, and his wife, Maut Mwia, worshipping Osiris with their six children. That same month, Zahi Hawass and his archaeologists discovered the funerary temple of Nayart or Narat, along with three warehouses made of bricks attached to the southeastern side, intended for storing temple provisions, offerings, and tools. The fallen obelisk near the main entrance was found engraved with Narat's name, previously unknown to researchers. Nayart was revealed to be the wife of Teti, 
the first king of the Sixth Dynasty. In November 2021, Cairo University archaeologists embarked on a significant excavation that yielded the discovery of several tombs, each unraveling a piece of Egypt's rich history. Among these, the tomb of Bata M. Woya, the chief treasurer during the illustrious reign of Ramesses II, stood out as a testament to the prominence of individuals in ancient Egyptian society. Additionally, a tomb belonging to the esteemed military leader Hor Mahib was unearthed, shedding light on the multifaceted roles played by influential figures during this historical period. Moving forward to March 2022, the archaeological endeavors continued with the unveiling of five tombs dating back an impressive 4,000 years. These tombs, attributed to senior officials from both the Old Kingdom and the First Intermediate Period, provided invaluable insights into the administrative and societal structures of ancient Egypt during these epochs. On May 30th, 2022, Saqqara witnessed a remarkable display of archaeological treasures, a curated collection of 250 sarcophagi and 150 statuettes, originating from more than 2,500 years ago during the late period, offered a glimpse into the intricate burial practices and artistic craftsmanship of the time. Notably, a nine-meter-long papyrus scroll was showcased potentially depicting a chapter from the Sacred Book of the Dead, adding depth to our understanding of ancient Egyptian religious beliefs and rituals. May 2022 also announced the discovery of a nearly 4,300-year-old tomb attributed to Met Jeju. This high-ranking individual held a pivotal role in handling sealed royal documents, emphasizing the significance of bureaucracy in ancient Egyptian governance. The tomb, meticulously adorned, revealed Mechetju's dual role as a priest and inspector of royal property, placing him in a position of influence during the reigns of the first three rulers of the Sixth Dynasty, Teti, Uzerkare, and Pepi I, Kamil O. Kurashkiewicz. The expedition director from the University of Warsaw's Polish Center of Mediterranean Archaeology played an essential role in unraveling this captivating chapter of ancient Egyptian history. In the latest archaeological breakthrough in January 2023, Zahi Hawass brought to light the excavation of four tombs at the historical site of Saqqara. This remarkable discovery included a 4,500-year-old mummy identified as Hekashepes, lavishly adorned with gold. The artifacts uncovered during this exploration spanned the periods of the 5th and 6th dynasties, offering a glimpse into the rich cultural and historical tapestry of ancient Egypt. Among the prominent figures revealed through these findings were individuals from varied roles during the dynasties we mentioned earlier. One of the highlighted figures was Knumjadef, a priest inspector and supervisor of nobles whose tomb stood out as a significant archaeological find. Situated within the pyramid complex of Unas, the last king of the 5th dynasty, Kanumjadef's tomb was intricately decorated with scenes depicting the nuances of daily life. In addition to this, the discovery featured the tomb of a noteworthy personality identified as the pharaoh's secret keeper. This title denoted a priestly role held by senior palace officials, suggesting a person of considerable influence in the ancient Egyptian hierarchy. Furthermore, the archaeological exploration brought to light the burial site of a priest and yet another tomb belonging to a figure named Fetek, who held the esteemed roles of a judge and writer. These revelations not only contribute to our understanding of the societal structure during the 5th and 6th dynasties, but also provide invaluable insights into the lives and roles of individuals who played pivotal roles in ancient Egyptian history. The collective findings underscore the continued significance of Saqqara as a treasure trove of historical and archaeological wonders. We've come to the end of this video. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.